Yo, what's up with y'all, man? I hope you're doing good. If you're new and you're a fan of the NBA, subscribe to this channel. So let's get straight into it. So before the NBA season began late October, the playing field was of course set to be as even as it's ever been in years. Thanks to of course all the events taking place in the summer of 2019. And now that we're 30-ish games into the season so far, we now know who's most likely Likely to make some real deal serious damage once playoff time starts. There are truly about seven ish teams in the mix for a championship. You know, that's what they all say. But if we're keeping it real, only three absolute max four teams belong in the conversation. Those teams being led by Joel Embiid and the Australian version of Evan Turner, the Bucks and the reigning MVP, and lastly, the baddest of the bad, the Los Angeles Lakers and the Los Angeles Clippers. So look, it's trade season, and in this moment in time, like literally as we speak right now, teams aren't looking to make any major moves just yet at this time you know everybody is just surveying the playing field making any risky moves right now would just be foolish but the thoughts the possibilities and the scenarios are percolating they're forming floating inside of all management's heads they're flowing now in order to prevent the disappointment that could be at their doorstep come april may and possibly june this is the time where gms attempt to intercept future heartbreaks with savvy clever and unpopular moves made it is that season and we're starting to see all these storms come now to contribute to this trade one that i I've been on. I of course have to try to tackle the big old cloud of cockiness and uncertainty that's in LA, the LA Lakers. What caused this uncertainty over the last week was the loss of the Bucks, and the boiling point was, of course, what happened on Christmas Day. The Lakers got clapped and upset at home. This game was marked on calendars and was said to be one of the games of the year. And it was, it almost lived up to that hype. Almost lived up to that hype. Keyword almost. The hype of this rivalry would have been even greater than what it is if LA won. But now it feels like the power has shifted in LA and the time has come. It's come whether or not LA or LA fans like it or not. When you have LeBron James on your roster and the most storied franchise in league history, people like me are going to toy and fiddle with ideas and throw out names. Now wholeheartedly, do I think that LA is going to make a trade happen before the trade deadline comes? No. If we're being completely real, if LeBron James wasn't acting like a simp out there on the court against the Clippers, then I probably wouldn't even have to make this video right now. The results of those two games could have been very different if LeBron James just stepped up and didn't have two very below average performances. And to think that the Lakers had a chance to win while LeBron's being that bad is a sign of positivity. But still, regardless, this scenario that I'm about to put on the table still has to be explained. So there's a chance that LA gets slightly better, well not even slightly, substantially better possibly if they make a slight change. Change. And it wouldn't and shouldn't hurt at all to be at least open to the idea. Now before we reveal this specific trade and dive into the details, we gotta look at this team and see what's missing. What's a glaring hole that needs to be brought into the light? Every team has one. For the Clips, it's their interior defense. It's suspect. And as for the Milwaukee Bucks, they might not have the firepower thanks to the differential in talent between their duo and Giannis and Chris Middleton. I can just go on and on about several teams, but deep down we really know that three teams have a real chance to win it. But back to the main focus, what are are the Lakers missing? And to me, that's a reliable, consistent offensive threat from the bench, preferably on the perimeter. Someone who was a scoring threat alongside Rondo would complete this team. They need that to combat with the two-headed monster that lies on the bench for the Clippers. Now, with what they have been ready in Kyle Kuzma, Rondo, and Alex Caruso, I guess, just isn't good enough. That combination should be better. And the Lakers have a chance to make it better. So now that we have an idea of what type of players to look at, let's go ahead and check out this team's cap situation because it's... It's something. Let's just say it's unique. The Lakers would be in a much more favorable position if they had a couple five, six, maybe seven million dollar contracts lying on their roster. The biggest benefit to having several small contracts like that is the flexibility and creativity to do whatever the hell you want come trade season. And the Lakers just simply don't have that. Thus making nearly every single trade, perfect trade that makes sense, that comes to mind, almost impossible to form. Their salary situation consists of two huge contracts in LeBron and AD, a newly given $15 million deal that belongs to Danny Green, KCP's $8 million deal, and then there's everyone else. The remains of this roster consist of a bunch of four to one million dollar contracts. So there's not a lot of trades that I and others love that could actually be pulled off. So it looks like we have some finessing to do. It's okay because I ain't gonna lie, finessing is my favorite thing to do. <laughs> if the ops are watching this, look, I'm just kidding. I'm capping for the video, just entertain it. <laughs> the saying goes, keep your enemies close and your friends closer. 
What did you just say? Wait, no, it don't go like I messed that up. Let's try that again. Shit. The same goal is keep your friends close and your enemies closer. The Lakers have a well-documented rivalry with the little purple organization that's just a tad up north. The Sacramento Kings have a built-up beef with the Lakers for what it seems has been ages now. And even though things have died down dramatically, the history and tension between the two organizations are still there. But these two teams have players that they could greatly benefit from. Now, if you haven't been paying too much attention to a team like the Sacramento Kings, and like, if you haven't, I mean... I don't blame you, like, why would you just sit down on a Saturday night or whatever and willingly say, I want to watch the Sacramento Kings, like, nobody does that. Only junkies do that, and this is where I step in. Things have not been good over there at all, and the record reflects that. For the most part, I believe that's due to injury, a few disappointing players, and staff. They've been having an abysmal season so far, and I just know that this season so far for Kings fans truly hurts because of what they did last year. Last year, this team came out of nowhere and nearly made the playoffs. Since then, they've regressed significantly, and they've lost their identity. They've been taking a lot of L's so far this season, and could potentially be taking an even bigger one this offseason. There's a very strong chance that they have to watch a player that they've helped grow and develop go ahead and turn into a star somewhere else for the free. If you're catching on to who what I'm talking about, then you caught on to me. We're on the same wavelength and the same vibe. And Laker fans should especially be on the same vibe as me right now. These stats that you see on the thumbnail aren't cherry-picked, exaggerated, nor fabricated. Those are the numbers that this man Bogdan Bogdanovich has been putting up against the Lakers these last two years. He's serving out 20 on site with stupid efficiency every single time he sees y'all on the street. Laker fans and Bogey are ultra familiar with each other and that should go unquestioned. Now Sack is in danger of, no, they're not in danger, they are going to lose this man in the offseason. After just offering him a measly 12 to 13 million dollar a year contract, he's betting on himself and is going to chase an even bigger bag, a well-deserved bag, just in another location. Bogey's ability to comfortably get into a spot, play on and off the ball thanks to his great shooting ability and capability to create, makes him a fearless and seamless fit. And as for how the Kings could benefit from this, they get a good young asset that they could experiment with in the future. Now, I'm not gonna lie and avoid this awkwardness. I'm a smart NBA fan, bro. This trade right here helps the Lakers more than it helps the Sacramento Kings. And just for that, the Kings may just tell the Lakers to go to hell as soon as they hit their line because just because the blood is that bad. The idea is now out though. Kuz as in the making of this video has been playing much better as of recent. And as I said earlier, I do not think that he'll get traded. But if some way, somehow he was to, this idea gotta be brought up on the tape. Kyle Kuzma, Quinn Cook as a salary filler, and maybe a first round pick because the Kings hate y'all. For Bogdan Bogdanovich, straight up. I hope it happens. This video and this video idea doesn't have to be taken seriously, but I just want you to fiddle with this concept in your head. This is the end of the video though, man. I really, really do appreciate you for coming over here on my channel and seeing what I have to talk about today. That is extremely dopey, and I just wanna let you know that. Before you leave, make sure you go ahead and leave a like, comment, and also share this video with at least three of your friends. And also, while you're at it, use my Seat Geek code, Mojo99 for $20 off of your next purchase. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, until then, I'll get right with you. Oh yeah, this is my, damn. This is my last video of 20. 19 and we're going into 2020 you know what that means i can't say what that means but just know that or hope i hope that it's my breakout here so let's go i get right with you so my girl who'd have a dog